mentioned something from uh, Pastor Layla. And again, I just want to mention to everybody, the church she's talking about is not a 200-member church. It's a 20,000-member church with, you know, 1,500 small groups. Okay, we're talking about a major ministry that yeah. she's been a part of in this recent season. But what Pastor Layla said about the issue of, of no concrete truth, mm -hmm. that is such a powerful such a issue. Thing. And that's one of the biggest concerns I have that we'll get into about the issue of disciple making. Mm -hmm. Because obviously discipleship is all about a truth. It's about a master coming into your life with an absolute perspective on reality. And so what you're saying, what I hear you saying, and maybe you can elaborate on this, is that is that really we think that people want to be free to just embrace their own truth but actually that produces an insecurity that alienate, alienates them from life because there's no concrete truth to bank on so they're hungering in a sense the kingdom longing in a sense is for absolute truth that's interesting can you can you go into that a little bit and maybe give us some examples of that yeah um <laughs> I always feel like I have to give caveats for some of my thoughts and maybe I need to be better about that. But let me, let me give you an example. We, I grew up with a father who uh, he, he's strict. Now I'm not, I'm not necessarily condoning all of the ways he did relationship, but, but these are, these are the things that I knew with my father. Uh, there were boundaries. And if I crossed those boundaries, there would be consequences. Yeah. And um, I had a mom, she knows I talk about this, so she doesn't get too bothered by it. I had a mom who really embraced the like free choice type parenting. And, and so it was, it was quite different when dad was home versus when mom was home or who was around, you know, wh when life was going on. If dad said, you're going to be grounded for a month, you were going to be grounded for a month, no matter what, there was no bargaining. There was no negotiating. That's the way it was. If mom said you were grounded for a month in about three days, you could probably say, look, mom, I behaved really well for three days. And she would probably adjust that grounding. Right. And, and we've talked about these things now, but with mom, um, it, it was very unstable, unstable. It was very, um, I know I could bargain my way out of a lot of things. I could skew perspective. Um, and you never really knew what you were going to get. Right. And so it bred, uh, honestly, a sense, um, and, and I don't, I just hope this doesn't sound too harsh, but in a sense, uh, an idea of disrespect, like I, I can't, respect her position because it changes all the time right wow. and uh with my dad and and we've talked about these things as a family now with my dad you knew what you were going to get you knew where the line was and even when it felt sometimes maybe wow like dad is harsh uh i trust him yeah. and, and to this day i trust my father and, and he, i will still someone asked me about my dad and, and understand my dad's not even a believer Somebody asked me about my dad and I'll say, he's a man of integrity. He, he does what he says. That, that's what I know about my dad. It was wow. never unstable. You knew what you were going to get, even when you didn't like what you were getting, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I think the growing distrust in the church is we are all over the map mm. on what, what we believe. We are all over the map on what is truth. We are all over the map on integrity because we have a growing number of pastors who get up and preach a sermon one Sunday, and then they're being arrested for sexual abuse next month. Wow. Let's just be yeah. honest, right? Yeah. Oh, there's an alarming, um, oh my God, I have a graphic that I actually wanted to send to you guys, and then I forgot. Here it is real quick. They polled non-church Christians, spiritual people, but wouldn't consider themselves Christians, and they asked questions about, you know, do you feel positively or negatively about this? In inside the church, when they talked about celebrity pastors, 17% of Christians say that they, they would trust a celebrity pastor. A wow. Christian pastor who's not a celebrity, that's only at 50, 56% inside the church. Wow. So Christians trust about one out of every two pastors, right? A lot of that is our despair, and, and I'm not putting that on you as pastors, but a lot of that is the disparity in what we say we believe, how we do church, how we do culture, how we do blah, 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 all of these different things. So yes, that's producing massive, as Layla said, massive insecurity in a generation. 
because there's no direct truth. And that's where I'm saying, I don't think, um, I don't think God's doing a new thing. I think he's restoring the initial thing. I don't think that God is trying to do something new in church. I think he's trying to restore us to the initial DNA of church because we've gotten so far away from it. Church isn't bad. I love church. Working for Michael actually restored my love for the church. It restored my faith in pastors. It restored my faith that had been lost uh, in in other things. So so I, I understand. I love the church and and many of its forms. But the reality is we've gotten so far away from what God ordained the church to be that there is instability in culture. Because for years, remember this, y'all, y'all will remember it firsthand. I remember it secondhand. For years, people said, you have a problem, go to the church, even if you're not a believer. Yeah. You, you have a problem, go to the priest. Right. I mean, that that was the culture for so long. Still, when we go to Africa, I keep a Bible in my backpack in war zones because if somebody points a gun at my head and I pull my Bible out and I say, I'm a pastor, they go, oh, don't, don't touch the woman of God. In our culture here in America, they would go, great, I'll shoot you. Right. Because there's the distrust of pastoral leadership and and church leadership. So these are the things I think God is trying to work on um, by building trust between the church and the culture. Again, not to lower the standards, but to actually have one and say, you're going to get the truth here. You're going to, you're going to get the reality here. We're going to love you and we're going to pray for you. And we're going to, we're going to fight for you. You can trust us um, in, in a sense. And so Layla was beautiful and and she literally she's one of the few mega church pastors i know that still does one-on-one counseling with their the laity she is often in her office meeting one-on-one with young people and people who are part of the church which i have a huge respect for her so it's not that she doesn't have her hand on the pulse of the culture she very much does she's counseling heck i often was sending my students i don't want to deal with that y'all go to pastor layla she she loves this stuff you know and she would sit down and she will walk with Um, a a generation that is struggling with homosexuality and will tell them the truth, but walk with them through it. And they trust her, right? They will walk that through because they, they do trust her. And so I think that's, that's what we're dealing with when we're talking about an anxious generation. Well, yeah, there's no boundaries. And and we have parents who have, it's kind of swung that way. Um, You know, a lot of my millennial friends are trying a new parenting style, which looks very much like, and I'm, I'm not trying to attack any, anybody's teaching on this. Like, let me be careful in how I say it, but it's, it's your choice. No, no, you're a child. <laughs> and, yeah. and there's an age at which you are mature enough to make choices for yourself. Uh, but there, are, there is a point at which it is very dangerous to let you make a choice for yourself. And so if we've swung way too far in that direction, it is building insecurity in a younger generation uh, that goes, well, Mom and dad, let me do what I want. Yes. Right. Mom and dad, let me believe what I want. So now we're doing gender surgeries on 10 year olds because you can, you can be what you want. Right. You can be a boy or you can be a girl. Or I I sat down with a 13 year old. I went and spoke at a a youth camp, which I just still, I love when I get to do that. Um, I don't, I don't get asked to do that much anymore. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or, you know, conferences or, or what it is, but I love when I get to go be with youth. And so I went, I took uh, two of my kids that I disciple with me. I took one of Will Hart's kids we, and we went to this youth camp and I get pulled in and they're like, can you do counseling with these girls? I'm like, I love it. Great. Let's do it. So I'm sitting down with this girl. She's 13 years old. Immediately the Lord spoke to me and said, yeah, she's, she's battling in her sexuality. And so I began to talk to her and she has a boyfriend and a girlfriend wow. and she's 13. Wow. And she, she loves Jesus. And as far as she's concerned, there's no problem with that. And no one's ever told her otherwise. Wow. And so when I say, Hey, like I can help you with that. Like, would you like to do some deliverance? <laughs> you know, like wow. that's not God. She's like, no, I, I think Jesus is totally okay with where I am. I, I, I think it's fine. And I'm going, how long have you been sitting in our churches and no one's ever told you this isn't okay. Yeah. You've, you, no one has told you this isn't okay. Wow. Why? Because we, we're just glad you're in the room. We're just happy you're here. 